What do you do on third and long? I've got a play for you today right out of Chip Kelly's playbook. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, former pro quarterback and quarterback's coach here at EliteAthletesTV.com. Today, I want to talk to you about a third and long situation. When you get to third and long, boy, that butthole gets a little bit tight and everybody starts thinking, hmm, what am I going to do? Well, I've got a play for you today that's going to solve a lot of those problems. If you have smart players, you can add some options into it, some reads into it. Even if you don't have smart players, you can run it as a static play, and it's going to be pretty effective. If you're seeing that cover four, like a lot of teams are seeing around the country in that third and long or second and long situation, this one will beat cover four. Before I get started, make sure that you subscribe and ring that bell. If you haven't done it yet, we talk about X's and O's. We talk about quarterback thought process. We talk about the mentality of a team and building culture. Take care of all those things here. Give me a thumbs up. Just smash that button down below. And please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you about the videos that you would like to see. Any questions that you have, I'm happy to answer them if I can. Now let's take a look right out of Chip Kelly's playbook. Used it this past Saturday versus Cal. It's a great cover four beater. It's a great second or third and long play. And I think you need to add it to your playbook if you want to have some variety and a different answer for what teams are doing. So you get yourself in a jam here. Second and long, third and long. Maybe there was a penalty. Maybe you lost yards on first down or second down. And now you've got to try to get the sticks. And so you need a play that's going to work for you on third down. What do most teams do? Well, a lot of teams will run four vertical. So attack the hashes outside four vert, check down with the back. Pretty standard, pretty simple. And as a result, what you get on defense is cover four. You can see it here. Cal's playing cover four. So everybody's got a quarter of the field to take away that four vert. When you run cover four, backers off and you leave that boundary semi undefended. Now there's rules in four that make up for that a couple of them. A, if you get something to the flat right now, that corner's probably going to sit on it and the safety's going to help over the top. What are the other rules of cover four? Well, anything that crosses that safety's face, once it gets vertical, he has to jump it. So a couple of things to think about when you're attacking cover four. Four vertical, not very good against cover four. You're likely to hit the check down. Some teams will try to run it. They see it as a split safety. And so they'll have the receiver run the bender. But again, part of those cover four rules is anything that crosses your face, you jump it. So it's not a great play if you're getting cover four. In this case, UCLA runs a switch. And so now rather than your standard cover four, they're taking outside receivers up the hash and inside receivers outside. It's a little bit better. You have to get the safety and corner to play it off, but most teams are sophisticated enough to switch now. And so what ends up happening is this safety takes the route coming to him. The corner keeps expanding and getting depth with the switch route coming at him. Same thing here. Safety takes the route coming at him, and the corner gets depth. Well, the, one of the biggest rules in any zone coverage, if you're a deep player, then you have to be the deepest man in your zone. And so what I like that UCLA does here is they run the switch, like I just showed you, these guys taking the hashes, and they run a bunch of wheels, so they gave this wheel look, but instead of running the switch with a full vertical, they put their tight end on an 18-yard hook. And so what that does is, as the corner sees a switch coming at him, and this inside receiver starts to push vertical, he's still got to stay home in case you get a corner coming at him. And so when the vertical comes through the middle, tight end's coming at him, corner has to stay above that. And you coach your quarterback up that if you see safety and corner both getting depth, staying deepest man in their zone, you look to the deep ball and you throw the hook on timing just past the sticks. You can't sit down on this because if you're a corner and you sit on it, you get a chance of getting beat on that wheel route. On the backside, what they run is that same switch here, but now he runs it as a dig. Backside receiver runs the wheel sit. 
So the full route combination, this becomes a post, and this becomes a hook. Now you've got a whole new combination of plays. Rather than just the switch vertical for vert, which a lot of teams run with the bender, instead now you've got a full progression that you can work for your quarterback. His eyes get back there, and he's going to key this guy, safety. If the safety flies out, you've got to think that he's going to cover this. So my alert is canceled. Then from the safety, he can look at that corner. If the corner is getting depth, now post is holding the safety. Wheel hook is going to be underneath that corner. Because of that overlook on defense, the backers are both playing inside the box and their nickel player is out to the field to cover down on number two, the more fleet-wide receiver. As a result, there's nobody left in this flat, and backers have to expand to that flat, playing hook zone inside. And so what that means is, when you get that 18-yard depth, now you're beyond that backer. Even if he gets a little bit of depth as a quarterback, you can still find a window to throw him open with the football. So let's take a look at it one time here. You can see they add a little play-action fake to hold the inside backers. Good job getting back. A little late on that ball, but this could also be a read. That's one piece that you could add to this as a coordinator, that you could run this as a vertical post with the wheel and let that number two to that side read the corner. If the corner is getting massive depth, he's going to hook up at the sticks. If the corner decides he's going to squat when he sees it coming, now you run the wheel. Really puts that corner in a bind because he's on an island. Once this inside seam post comes across his face. Then the other part I like about it as a quarterback, if say you don't like either one of these, say your tight end makes a bad read and you're running guys to get covered. The safety covers your post corner ends up covering your wheel or your wheel hook either way. Now you've got a guy who's finding space with vision. He's looking at this safety. He's feeling this inside player and he's got space and vision as he's coming into this window for a quarterback. Remember the quarterback's eyes have been this way. He's looking to the right. And so you're going to get flow out of these backers going away. As you run this seam dig, now the quarterback's eyes have started flow this way. And if this safety gets depth, you're going to have that for your number three. So again, let's go through the progression one time. If you're a quarterback, here's how we read it. Read here, alert. That's my key. If the safety gets depth, right down to number two. If he hooks and I like it, I throw it. If he doesn't, my eyes get right back to number three. Number four on the wheel, sit. And then you get your running back in the flat. And so it makes it super easy. You go one, two, three, four, five. And it creates a natural eye progression, natural eye flow for your quarterback to read it. Take a look one more time. Play action, hold the backers, drop back, see that corner falling out. Tight end sits down just past the sticks, and it's an easy first down. I always like plays that are simple and elegant for a quarterback to read. An easy progression for his eyes to read that high safety. If he's getting out, check that corner. If he's getting out, I know I'm going to have that hookup or the sit down by the tight end. I can make that an option for him that he reads if he's got the space, sit down one yard past the sticks. And so as a quarterback and a receiver or tight end in this case, you have to be on the same page, but it should be a pretty easy read for him. If it's not there, come back across. I've got my dig coming across, my wheel sit, and then my check down to the back and the flat. So I've always got an answer for everything they do. And because of my eye progression, I'm spreading the field and moving guys around. It's a great play. I like it. It's right out of Chip Kelly's playbook. And it worked extremely well for UCLA. They actually got two big first downs with this play this past weekend. If you haven't done so yet, make sure that you subscribe and ring that bell. Give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. I would love to hear from you. Just wanted to talk about a play that will help you convert more third downs, get rid of the four vertical look, and give them something to think about.